In today's online studio, I'll be comparing three very similar and yet very, very different mandolins and seeing how they stack up. When I went to Adelaide earlier this year to visit my family, I was at Dad's place. He's also a left-handed multi-instrumentalist. And there were three F-style mandolins there. There was his old one, uh, my old one, which I then gave to him. That's why I brought it over. And my new mandolin. So I thought, what a great chance for an experiment. Let's try them all out one by one, side by side, and compare how they sound. And I was trying to think, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do it right so that it's really the sound of the instruments that I'm comparing? Because there's so many different things that it could have been. Um, you know, could it be the pick that I was using, the microphone, the, the strings, the, the way you play? So many factors change the way an instrument sounds. So I was trying to narrow down as many of those as I could. Um, I couldn't do it all, but it was interesting to find out what the differences were when I did this side-by-side -side comparison. So first of all, let's meet these instruments. The first one is my Collings mandolin. This is the, uh, the one that I've been using for the last eight years. It's a, a beautiful mandolin. It's a Collings MF5, so it doesn't have all of the binding and uh, inlays and things like that but it's uh, still beautiful workmanship. Everything fits together amazingly. It's a satin finish, except on the neck, which is worn down to gloss from use. Uh, I've been playing that instrument with Mustard Courage, with the Beekeepers. It's served me really well. The second instrument is my father's Michael Kelly Dragonfly Custom 2. The first thing you'll notice when you look at this instrument is all the ornate inlay work all over the neck and on the headstock. The shape of the body is a standard F-style shape, but the F-holes are quite unusual. This is the instrument that I learned to play mandolin on, and I took it out on tour with me for a few years. Uh, if you're wondering about the, um, the bandit mask, you'll have to Google the Bombay Royale. And the third instrument is my new Paul Duff mandolin. This was made by Paul in Western Australia. It's only three months old. And he makes his mandolins to spec. This is as Lloyd Law would have made his F-style mandolins when he was working for Gibson back in the 20s. Everything is just top notch. The wood quality, the workmanship, it's also made to order. I got to choose the wood, the bracing, the fret size, the inlays. So I'm sitting down on the couch. I've got these three instruments there. I've got the microphone there. It's a Rode NT5 plugged into a Universal Audio Apollo Twin. To put these instruments through their paces, I played a fiddle tune. I played some chop chords. I played some classical music. And then I chopped it all up so that you hear one instrument after the other in each of those different styles. So the thing that struck me the most was how bright the Collings is in comparison to the others. And it's because it's got brand new strings on it. I only just changed the strings to give this instrument to Dad. And they're Elixir strings, they're really bright. Whereas the Michael Kelly, the strings are probably a year old. And the Paul Duff, I haven't changed the strings yet since he gave it to me, uh, which was about three months ago. And I've been playing it for hours a day. So one of those things that you just, should I put brand new strings on every instrument? Because some instruments sound better with older strings, some sound better with newer strings. It's one of those things that you have to match strings to the instrument sometimes. Anyway, let's have a listen to the chop chords. Well, 
I think the biggest difference was the Paul Duff, the bottom end, how strong and full that sound was. That's where Paul's instruments really stand out, is that strong chop chord that just punches through the mix. So I wasn't really that surprised when that one was the clear winner in that test. But let's go on to some classical music and see how they compare. So even though I was playing these instruments one after the other straight away, I still changed the way I played when I picked each one up. I was trying my best to play everything the same, but when you have a new instrument in your hands, the feel of it is different, the response is different, and you adjust. If it's a bright instrument, you play less bright, and if it's a dull instrument, you play brighter. You pick in a different place on the neck. You uh, adjust the angle of the pick. All these things just happen instinctively when you have a different instrument in your hands and it's so hard to take all that out of the equation so you're left with just the instrument itself. Another thing that's really different between instruments is dynamic range. You know, if you hit them softly, they'll have a certain response. If you hit them louder, eventually they get to the point where they start to splat or they buzz or they, the strings hit against the next fret. And that's very different from instrument to instrument, and so you have to adjust the dynamics of your playing too. That's something you get very used to. I'm, I've been playing the Collings for years, and I'm very used to its dynamic range, how loud I can play before it breaks up, and how softly I can play before it disappears. So what did you think? Did you like one instrument over the other? What were the sounds that struck you as good or bad in each of these? I'd be interested to know. Leave your comments down below. And if you think you've got it nailed now and you know which one is which, let's do a blind listening. I've got the fourth comparison to listen to. This is a Brazilian tune. And let's listen to each instrument one by one, but with no video. So you can try and work out for yourself which of the instruments I'm playing. So could you figure it out? Leave your answer in the comments below and I'll let the cat out of the bag in about a week's time. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. It was great fun to make. It was great fun to play all those beautiful instruments. And I'll be making more of these in the future. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time.